already learned how to buy and sell money, either with orders or directly on the market. It's simplicity itself with ID System, our trading terminal. Now, there's nothing left to do but to identify the optimum moments to buy or to sell. A mere trifle. This trifle has tantalized traders over the centuries and our whole science has developed called technical analysis. The Western School of Technical Analysis has its roots in 19th century America. I describe technical analysis as a science. What do I mean by this? Well, one thing I mean is that it's governed by clear and rigid laws. We'll start by learning how to plot price charts using a computer, of course, and then we'll move on to draw other lines. What are they for? Well, these lines help us determine what will happen to price in the future. They also give us an insight into how long price will remain above or below these lines. Today we're going to examine these lines and how to plot them correctly. The simplest price chart is the tick chart. What exactly is a tick chart? Each new change in price is charted by a standard move across the chart. The chart takes no account of time, so the more times the price changes in, say a minute, the more moves are made across the chart. This means that from 2 to 5 p.m. GMT, when the Frankfurt, London and New York exchanges are all open, there can be up to 10 changes in price in one minute. And late in the evening, at 10 o'clock in New York, when the world's main exchanges are closed, there'll be far, far fewer price changes. So price is strangely warped and distorted on tick charts. The tick charts on ID system, as well as those on other trade terminals, do not distort time. Each change in price is charted at the time it takes place. What we have here is a line chart, but one that charts price over a very limited period of time. What are tick charts for? Such charts are good reference points and are featured on the trading terminal to instantly inform our traders of any price change on the markets, but they are not used in technical analysis. So what kind of charts are used in technical analysis? If you look it up in the dictionary, the word bar is a thin piece of metal and we build our charts with bars. We'll show you how to plot a price chart now. You already know that Forex is a round the clock market, not forgetting the days off. And we've already mentioned that the trading day by international consensus comes to an end at 21.30 GMT. In reality, however, Professional traders view the trading session as finishing at 2100. Why is this? Bear with us and you'll see for yourself. With a bar chart, all the information about exchange price for any one day is shown on a vertical line. Let's look at the monitor, a heartbeat after the chiming of Big Ben, marking the beginning of the day and we'll see the first key price that's recorded on our bar. This is the open price, and it's marked as a little nodule on the left of our unformed bar. Punctually, at the end of the day, an instant before the clock strikes, we look at the monitor again, and we see a second currency price. This price is the close price, and is marked as a second nodule on the right of the bar. The ceiling that price reached this day is known as the high price and is the third key price. There are no highs without lows of course and the price floor or low price on the day is also recorded. We join the high and the low points with a vertical line and there you have it, the bar. 
a pretty widespread charting method. The four prices on the bar are referred to as O, C, H and L on the chart. And day after day, or hour after hour, bar after bar is laid out, marking time with a standard step to the right, creating a reliable price chart. They've been monitoring and studying exchange price behaviour on the Japanese archipelago for centuries. Rice prices have been recorded since as far back as the Middle Ages. If we want to draw a bar like the Japanese, we make the distance between close and open into a white rectangle and the high and low prices are joined to it with vertical lines. This new figure is called the Japanese candlestick, known to some traders as the candle. The rectangle is called the body and the vertical lines are the shadows. The candlestick body can change colour. If close is higher than open, as in our case, the body is white and it's rising. If close is lower than open, the candlestick body is black and it's falling. Many traders find the candlestick more visually appealing and easier to interpret. Take a look at the candlestick chart. With an uptrend, the chart brightens, and with a downtrend, the chart on the contrary darkens. When price is in a range, it flashes before our very eyes. We'll return to trends later. History has provided us with a fascinating case study. Two independent groups of traders analyzed the same phenomenon over a long period of time. They did not exchange any information and yet they came to the same conclusions. In Japan, where the candlestick was invented, a strict isolationist policy was in force until 1862 and this is why Japanese traders could know nothing about the American bar. Because of these restrictions and because of geography, candlesticks and bars were created completely independently of each other. Although they were developed at different ends of the world, both bars and candlesticks used the same four main prices in their construction. Open, close, high and low. This supports the thesis that exchange price behaviour is objective in character and submits to rigid laws. Technical analysis is involved in the study and application of these laws. The concept of trend is crucial to the technical approach to market analysis. Every tool that the trader uses, whether it's support and resistance levels, chart patterns, moving averages, trend lines, whatever, are applied in order to achieve one super task. The trader, that's you, uses them to identify and monitor a trend to allow them to do further work in its channel. Let me digress a little here. I said work rather than play. When you play the market, it's very easy to lose money, though it's not impossible to win. But when you're working on the market, the only possibility is to earn money. You'll often come across advice like, never trade against the trend, or the trend is your friend. So we'd better define a trend. Generally speaking, the trend is the direction the market is moving in. But in my opinion, this definition is an overgeneralization. In real life, no market moves in a straight line. A market moves in zigzags which resemble waves. Price rises and falls. 
It's the directional dynamics of these maximums and minimums which determine trend. The dynamics of these peaks and troughs, whether they're ascending, descending or horizontal, tells us about the character of the trend. If each subsequent peak and trough is above the previous one, we have ourselves an uptrend. It follows that if each subsequent peak and trough is lower than the preceding one, we've got a downtrend on our hands. If the peaks and troughs are at the same level, this is a range. Always remember that price can move in three directions, up, down and sideways. Many beginners make the elementary mistake of thinking the market can only move up or down. And it might surprise them to learn that, even according to the most conservative estimates, for about one third of all trading time, price is neither rising nor falling generally. This kind of price movement is known as a trading range. This sideways movement caused by similar up and down fluctuations reflects a period when price is in balance, when the parity between supply and demand for a given good is practically constant. Charles Dow, one of the earliest pioneers of technical analysis, called this movement a line. Trading on the exchange is a piece of cake. Any trader has just three options – to buy to take a long position, to sell, to take a short position, or in general to do nothing, to wait, to sit on the fence. If the market is trending up, it's time to buy. If it's down, sell. But if the market is flat, the best course usually is to do nothing. But how can we learn when to do what? The answer's simple. Get into technical analysis. The majority of its laws and findings are the result of the blood, sweat and tears of numerous traders. These lessons were learned the hard way. And remember, the wise man learns from the mistakes of others. The fool learns from his own, if he learns at all. And that's straight from the horse's mouth. As well as being able to move in three directions, the trend can be one of three degrees. These are the primary or major trend, the secondary or intermediate trend, and the minor trend. These terms relate to the temporal nature of the trend and were introduced by Charles Dow. He defined the major trend as existing on the market for more than a year. These long-term price movements are shaped by fundamental factors. Let's take oil as an example. Consumption is growing each year. Reserves are limited. The situation in the Middle East as the main oil supplier continues to grow more unstable and alternative sources of energy are still inadequately developed. The result of all this is that the price of oil has grown steadily over the last few years, and we can see this on the line chart. Dow defined the intermediate trend as lasting from three weeks to three months. Minor trends last no more than two to three weeks at the very most.